Let's take a few moments to consider design vehicles and their turning characteristics relative to intersection design. This requires that we know something about design vehicles. Design vehicles are used when making decisions about turning roadways and intersections. An intersection designed for passenger cars may be too compact for a long motorhome or tractor trailer to safely and comfortably maneuver. Have you ever witnessed a large vehicle like a school bus trying to negotiate a tight turn by swinging out into the opposing traffic lane? Well, that's what happens when a vehicle with a long wheel base attempts a turn that wasn't designed for its restricted turning capability. As we move forward, we need to remember that the design vehicle has physical dimensions that are representative of the vehicles in its class. Actual vehicles in its class may be shorter or longer than the design vehicle. In this view, we can take a quick look at the physical dimensions associated with length. Let's begin with the passenger car. Here we find that the wheelbase for a passenger car is 11 feet. The front overhang is 3 feet and the rear overhang is 5 feet. The overall length is cut off in this view, but I happen to know that it's 19 feet for passenger cars. Perhaps you're a car owner and you're wondering, is your car longer or shorter than this? Next, let's take a look at the single unit truck. The single unit truck has a wheelbase of 20 feet and an overall length of 30 feet. This interstate semi-trailer has an overall length of 68.5 feet. There are other dimensional aspects of a vehicle that are of interest to the designer. Perhaps you've already thought of a few. One is height. Design vehicle heights range from 4.25 feet for passenger cars to 13.5 feet for the largest trucks. Another consideration is width. Design vehicle widths range from 7 feet for passenger cars to 8.5 feet for the largest trucks. As you can imagine, truck operators can more comfortably maneuver in lanes that are 12 feet wide compared to lanes that are only 10 feet wide. Next, we'll consider the turning characteristics of vehicles. There are two conditions under which a vehicle must make turns. Low speed turns at less than or equal to 10 miles per hour and high speed turns at speeds greater than that. Low speed turns are limited by the physical dimensions and steering mechanisms. Turning templates provide illustrations of the different dimensions involved in low speed turns. There is a unique turning template for each design vehicle. Here's the low speed turning template for the intermediate semi-trailer known as WB40. The template is a resource for identifying the tightest turn that this particular vehicle can manage. As seen here, the minimum radius for the left front wheel is 40 feet. The range for this design value begins at 24 feet for a passenger car and goes up to 60 feet for the double tractor-trailer combination vehicle. The template here shows how the rear wheels of the semi-trailer -tra follow a different path than the front wheels. Notice that the path of the rear wheels is not circular and has a variable turning radius. The variable turning radius is no smaller than 19.3 feet. Critical radii of select design vehicles are conveniently tabulated in lookup tables like this one. Here we find that the minimum design turning radius for the passenger car is just under 24 feet. We need to remember that this minimum pertains to the path of the left front vehicle. It can 
be considered as the minimum outside radius. The associated center line turning radius is smaller, and the inside radius is even smaller than that. A key dimension in intersection design is the curb radius, also known as the curb return radius. The curb return radius is a term used by highway engineers to describe the sharpness of a corner. As seen here, a smaller curb radius is associated with a sharper corner that may not easily accommodate larger vehicles as they attempt this turn. A large curb radius accommodates larger vehicles and enables smaller vehicles to go around the corner faster. A large curb radius also increases the distance that a pedestrian must walk in order to cross the street. Consider for a moment that longer pedestrian crossing distances increase pedestrian exposure to vehicle conflicts. Thus, you might observe how pedestrian safety can be facilitated by smaller curb radii. This slows the turning speeds for vehicles and gives a shorter crossing distance for pedestrians. In this diagram, we observe a particular geometry wherein eight-foot curbs are associated with a pedestrian crossing distance of 42 feet, whereas 25-foot curbs are associated with a pedestrian crossing distance of 66 feet. Because the corner radius is often a compromise, its effect on both pedestrian and vehicle movements should be thoughtfully considered. So, how can we know if a given curb return radius is the best choice for the setting? Does the geometry of the intersection influence the path of the turning vehicle? Can we identify the appropriate design vehicle for the setting? Can we locate the associated minimum turning radius for the design vehicle? Are there standard curb return dimensions that we can find in some easy breezy lookup table and immediately adopt for our design? These are the questions that motivate our future lab activity.